Welcome to this presentation on manual hybridization of mercury LNA microRNA arrays. Here we'll guide you through the steps involved in a successful microarray experiment. As RNA samples are delicate, it's important to wear gloves at all times. We also recommend treating the bench area with an RNA removal solution. The labeling reaction is the first part of a microarray experiment. The mercury LNA microRNA power labeling kit uses a simple and fast two-step protocol for total RNA labeling. Before starting the reaction, spin down the dried down fluorescent dyes and the spike in RNAs, then transfer them to ice. Dissolve the dyes and the spike ins in nuclease-free water by pipetting up and down at least 10 times. Then place the tubes on ice. Make sure that the fluorescent dyes are protected from light. Next, prepare a master mix for the dephosphorylation step. This is the first step of the labeling reaction. Mix SIP buffer, SIP enzyme, and spike in RNAs. Then add the master mix to your RNA samples and spin down the contents of the tubes. The samples are now ready for incubation. Incubate at 37 and then 95 degrees in a thermocycler. The sample should then be snap cooled and put on ice. During the incubation, prepare a master mix for the labeling reaction by mixing labeling buffer, DMSO, dye, and labeling enzyme. Add the master mix to the dephosphorylated samples, mix thoroughly, and then spin down the contents of the tubes. The samples are now ready for the actual labeling, the second part of the labeling reaction. Incubate the samples at 16, then 65 degrees in a thermocycler. Then put the reaction on ice. Mix the corresponding Psi-3 and Psi-5 labeled samples. Protocols are also available for single color experiments. It's important to work quickly to keep the handling times to a minimum and to protect the samples from light. Spin down the contents of the tubes, then add RNA-free water and hybridization buffer to the samples. Incubate the samples at 95 degrees on a preheated heat block. Put them on ice and spin down the contents of the tubes. Now it's time to assemble the hybridization chamber. First place the backing slide in the lower part of the hybridization chamber. Ensure that the gasket faces upwards. Carefully load the sample. Avoid creating bubbles. Then carefully place the microarray slide over the sample with the barcode facing down. Place the barcode as far from the gasket as possible. Place the upper part of the hybridization chamber on top of the slide gasket sandwich. Apply the clamp and carefully tighten the screw. Ensure that the hybridization solution moves freely inside the chamber. The buffer level should be approximately in the center of the upper window. The level can be adjusted by twisting the screw. Place the chamber in a preheated hybridization oven and hybridize the slide overnight. On the following day, remove the slides from the hybridization chamber. Then carefully separate the slides in buffer A using a pair of tweezers. 
Transfer the array to a second jar containing buffer A until all slides are ready. Then wash the slides in preheated buffer A for two minutes by moving it up and down while keeping it submerged. Transfer the slides to buffers B and C for additional washes as shown. Slowly lift the slide to let the buffer drain, then place it in ethanol. Spin the slide to remove any residual solution. Immediately following this step, the slides should be scanned. This concludes this presentation on manual hybridization of mercury LNA microRNA arrays. Protocols are also available for the TCAN and MAUI hybridization stations. To learn more about our arrays and other microRNA research products, and to download fully validated protocols, please visit exacon.com/ls.